Hello everyone, on today's episode we want to talk about overcoming adversity from the one, the only, Rocky Balboa, Adrian. Hello everyone, I'm excited today to talk about overcoming adversity. Adversity is a true sign that you're alive. If you have no problems in your life, then you're more than likely dead, which isn't um, a perfect thing to be. So ultimately, we need to understand how adversity works, and I want to illustrate today a story that touched me so profoundly in regards to a guy that probably misunderstood, Sylvester Stallone, who we um, assume is this multi-million dollar actor who probably doesn't have a lot of substance, but the story is much deeper than that, and behind every great person is a great story of adversity. So as always, I'm going to begin with a quote. And that quote is, let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you get hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done from the great Sylvester Stallone. Now, that quote always gets me energized because it's true, life will hit you, the universe will throw challenges at you to create the best version of you, and that can only be done through resistance. We all know if you go to the gym and you pick up a weight with no resistance on it, no weight, you're not going to improve yourself, you're not gonna get fitter. So, resistance is at the key, and understanding resistance and not rejecting it all the time and trying to find the comfortable place to hide or to sleep in or to you know, avoid those, those conflicts and those um, difficult conversations is really not allowing you to become the, the person the universe wants of you. So, the questions I get about adversity all the time are, um, are interesting. You know, adversity is different to everyone. For some people, you know, um, Having to um, take a pay cut is a massive adversity. For some people, it's the death of you know, loved ones. And you can see how adversity is a mental construct. You know, Some people can be depressed because they didn't win a, a, a sporting game or their team didn't win a sporting game. Some people can be depressed because you know, there was an earthquake in their city. So you can see how the mind will just simply take many things and turn to them as big as they want. So understanding adversity is really key. And I want to talk to you about um, the story of Sylvester Stallone. So, Sylvester Stallone, most people won't know, but um, there was a time in his life where he was in New York and he was, um, he was unemployed. So he got a job as a, as a taxi driver around New York. And um, unfortunately, the person who owned the taxi eventually um, had to get rid of Sylvester Stallone. And he found himself in a situation where he's in New York, he can't even become, a, he's not even a cab driver. And ultimately, he doesn't have enough money to keep his apartment, he's kicked out of his apartment. So here's this guy, and he's living in New York City, a cold place, and has nowhere to live and has no money. It's a difficult place to start. No one would have thought this guy would be who he is today, you know, given that start of the story. So ultimately, he to find shelter, he started hanging out at the back of a, um, a public library in New York, and he started spending time in the library because it was warm. He started reading books and improving himself, and he had a terrible stutter and didn't speak very well, so he spent a lot of time studying books and understanding self-development. So he was in a great place. He understood this adversity could be overcome. Ultimately, while he was at the library, he met an old high school friend, and in, in the conversation with the high school friend, um, the high school friend asked how he was, and eventually, you know, Sylvester owned up, he's a very honest guy, and said, it's not homeless at the moment, mate, it's not, things aren't going too well. And his friend said, well, that's, that's horrible, you know, you can sleep on my couch until you, you know, you get a job. And Sylvester Stallone said, that's, that's fantastic, I'd love to sleep on your, on your couch. There's only one problem, I, I have a dog, is that okay? And at the time, um, Sylvester Sloan had a, uh, I think it was a, uh, a bulldog, British bulldog, and it was, you know, his only companion during those very difficult times. He was a single guy. And the friend said, no, nah, that shouldn't be a problem, you know, like, bring the dog up. I don't think there's any rules about dogs. So Sylvester Stallone um, stayed at um, his friend's house for a couple of weeks and was looking for jobs unsuccessfully and, you know, was really trying to do his best. But unfortunately, he got knocked back after knocked back after knocked back. Couldn't even get, you know, a job in, in such a big city. And his friend, who sounds like a great soul, was, um, um, was aware that, you know, Sylvester was a little bit down. So he bought two tickets to watch Muhammad Ali versus, well, Muhammad Ali fight in Madison Square Gardens. So that, and, and Sylvester Sloan is a huge boxing fan, so those tickets instantly lifted his mood, and him and his friend went out to see the incredible Muhammad Ali. And that night was really pivotal to Sylvester Sloan because he was obviously very down and out, and he was going into this magnificent event, and something happened. Now, the normal thing happened, which is 
at the start of the uh, boxing event, you have all the fanfare and they introduce Muhammad Ali and the crowd goes nuts. This is the greatest boxer who had ever lived. Now, this is the end of his career, but, you know, he was a legend by that time. So he walked in, everyone's going crazy, you know, yelling out, the champ, the champ is here, the greatest. And, and um, Muhammad Ali got into the ring and sort of got ready. Now, as it was the end of his career, he was fighting a no-name. I think it was a Polish boxer. And this Polish boxer ultimately came in after Sylvester Sloan. And the most interesting thing happened is as he walked down, he was such an unknown that he didn't even get booed. People just were silent, almost like oblivious that he was there. Like It was kind of like the fact that he walked down Madison Square Garden silent because he was just there to get his... You get knocked out by Muhammad Ali, so everyone could congratulate Muhammad Ali. So, as you can imagine, as the um, boxing match went on, Muhammad Ali was getting massive cheers every time he hit the Polish boxer, and you know everyone was saying, "Look at you know, look at the way he's hitting." But as round one, two, three, four, five, round seven came past, people started to acknowledge this Polish boxer was you know putting in a great fine. You know, he was taking a lot of punches and he was getting a couple in, and he wasn't giving up. So very slowly, this guy who no one had even had any bothered at looking at as he entered the ring started getting some cheers, and every time he landed a punch, a few more cheers. And ultimately, the it went to the the twelfth round, which is you know amazing for a heavyweight boxing match. And you know the crowd was rap rapturous; they were you know um, yelling and screaming. It was a fantastic boxing match, and on points as we could imagine, Muhammad Ali won. So Muhammad Ali left the, left Madison Square Garden. Everyone was the champ, the champ. You know all the sort of acclaim. And then the Polish boxer, just sort of, you know, slowly and warily after, you know, taking 12 rounds of a beating, expects to leave in the same way he did, which is an absolute silence and um, unacknowledged, leaves the rope, and Sylvester stands up, and he noticed something interesting happening. The Polish boxer was getting a standing ovation louder than what Muhammad Ali even got when he left. So this Polish boxer was amazed, and as he left, you can imagine his chest was up, and everyone was just absolutely enthralled with this Polish boxer, the beating he took, he took and how valiant he was. That night, Sylvester Sloan went back to his friend's house and wrote the script for Rocky, and was inspired so much by that boxing match that he created the, uh, the, the, the script, the screenplay for Rocky. Now, he'd written this script and decided that he was going to sell the script and he was going to act in it, and this was his ticket. He didn't need to find you know, a cab driving job. This was his future. This was his vision. And he went around trying to sell the script with no luck whatsoever. As a first-time screenwriter, no one wanted to hear about him. Now, while this happened, his friend had some um, challenges with the landlord, and ultimately the landlord didn't want a dog in the place. So um, his friend, Sylvester's friend, asked him to leave the apartment, which he did. Now, Sylvester was in the same spot he was only a few months ago. He was homeless. He was sitting at the front of a liquor store with his dog, and he had absolutely no money. So he eventually, without any even money to eat, he eventually had to sell his dog. So his only companion was sold for about 20 bucks to some guy passing the liquor store. Now, while he was doing this, he hadn't given up. He knew he needed that money to survive, but he continued to push his script. And eventually, um, a producer saw his script and saw you know, how great the story was, which I think we all know now is a great story. And he said, this is fantastic. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to give you $250,000 for the script. You imagine Sylvester Sloan just going, oh my God, this is amazing, you know, like I'm, I'm going to sell the script, this is fantastic. Well, I'll go home and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go see my friend and um, I'll talk to him about it. So he talked to his friend, his friend said, yeah, this is fantastic, take it. So he used the, pay for, he used the phone in his friend's house and said, listen, um, fantastic, I'll take the $250,000. And the um, producer goes, great, let's get started. And, Rocky, and Sylvester Sloan goes, great, so when do, I, when do I see you? And he goes, well, you don't need to see us, we've got the script. We'll pay the money, we'll take care of everything. But what, when's the first day of shooting? And he said, well, Sylvester, you don't need to worry about that because you, you, you wrote the script, you don't need to worry. And Sylvester said, oh, I think you're missing something here. And he goes, what am I missing, Sylvester? He goes, it clearly says in the screenplay that Sylvester Stallone is Rocky. And the agent laughed, the producer laughed and said, listen, mate, you, you, you're a no-name actor. There's no way you're acting in this. We've already got an actor picked out. And they did, they had a completely different actor picked out. And you're not going to be acting in this film. So you can imagine how devastated he was. So with total self-belief and the belief in himself that he could overcome adversity, Sylvester Sloan says, I'm not selling the script and hung up. Isn't that incredible? He turned down $250,000 and he'd only just sold his dog recently. So the producer and the agents were sort of a little bit freaked out because they knew that... Um, that you know this was a good script so they rang Sylvester Sloan back and they said listen we'll give you $300,000 for the script 
Sylvester Stallone said, that's great, when do I start shooting? They said, you're not going to be in this movie, mate. No way. Sylvester Stallone said, I reject your offer. Eventually, he was called back and Sylvester Stallone was told, we'll give you $25,000 for the script and you can act. Because the producers worked out, let's say, if we don't spend much money on the script, then we can probably maybe allow this bum to act and we can still make some money out of this movie. So he accepted. So he, he believed in himself so much, you know, he took 25000 instead of 300000 now, when you're poor and you haven't had any money and someone gives you $25,000, you think you'd go celebrate and, and blow it. But Sylvester Stallone went straight back to that liquor store and sat there until eventually the person he sold his dog to walked past. Now, the guy did walk past with the dog and Sylvester Stallone said, listen, I want my dog back. I'll pay you. I want my dog back. And, and, and the, the guy said, listen, I don't want to give this dog back. It's a great dog. I bought it fair and square. Get away from me, mate. He goes, no, I'll give you any amount that you want. And the guy goes, how are you going to give me any amount I want, mate? Like, you know, you're, you're a bum, you sold your dog, you haven't got any money, see you later. So Sylvester said, no, I've sold this script. He goes, script to what? And he goes, oh, it's this movie, it's called Rocky. And he explained the script to the guy who bought the dog. And the guy thought it was a great script. And he said, listen, if this is true, I want to be in that movie. And Sylvester Sloan said, okay, if you give me my dog, I'll put you in the movie. Now, Sylvester Sloan couldn't get him into the first movie because obviously it's tough enough to get himself in it. But in the second uh, movie in Rocky 2 the person he sold his dog to was actually has a cameo role in that movie and it just goes to show how incredible it is then how much the universe will just bring and provide into your life if you stick with it and avoid, and, and really embrace adversity and, and Sylvester, for Sylvester Stallone that story is just incredible he knew what he wanted he knew what he had and he wasn't he didn't care about you know the, the big numbers being thrown in front of him he knew that any adversity that came his way he could deal with it as long as he stuck to what he wanted so, I believe there's an inner power within us that makes us winners, and we just need to tap into that power. We don't need to reach out, we don't need to become an, you know, a thousand times better than we already are, we just need to look inside. That story of Sylvester Stallone is just an incredible illustration how adversity coming into your life can build you and can create you. You just can't reject it. You can't just give in to adversity. You really need to roll with it and become the strong person it wants you to become. Great story, who would have thought that Rocky would um, provide you know, a one year life challenge video and story. But tomorrow we'll learn from another great mentor or leader. Until then, goodbye.